Alright, DigiKey and Adafruit bring you. This week's Eye on MPI is from CUI Devices. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. That's a nice announcer voice. That's right. This week's uh, microphone sensor, the CMM 4030D 261 I2S. It's an I2S microphone, and uh, I've been actually looking for a device like this, and so when I saw it pop up on digikey.com slash new, I was like, this is the MPI, because I'm really a big fan of I2S mics. But first, let's talk about microphones. Um, these graphics from the CUI site, by the way, like their graphics game is like so sweet. I love their look. It's like this really adorable, like cute, flat iconography, but it's very descriptive and they've got great blog posts. So do check out the CUI devices blog if uh, you want to learn all about sensors and microphones. Anyways, there's two basic types of microphones. You want to get audio into your project. There's the MEMS mic on the left and there's the Electret mic on the right, sometimes called like a cartridge microphone. And Electret microphones like have been around for like decades and decades. They've been extremely popular, and they're pretty easy to use. So they look like that. They've got two pins. There's um, like an Electret uh, element inside. There's um, some fabric covering it as like a bit of a uh, uh, wind guard. And um, you have to solder them onto a board. Like here we've got a... Um, Breakout that we've created for an electret microscope, uh, sorry, electret, electret microphone. And um, on the opposite side, because these electret microphones, they create a very small uh, voltage. Uh, you need to have, sometimes you have a JFET built in to do a little bit of buffering, but you still need an amplifier with like at least 100 time gain, if not more. It'd be like you know, 200 uh, time gain. And so I've got a little sensor here that uh, takes the microphone. It's designed for electric mics. It amplifies it, there's a little potentiometer, and gives you an analog output. That's right. These these microphones are analog output, right? And that's important to note. So um, there's some good things about electrets and some bad things. And um, the bad things are, well, good things are they're really cheap, right? And they're really common. Um, they're only like a couple cents. And if you have an analog input, you can use a pretty basic op amp to get that signal um, into your device for, you know, simple um, uh, analog uh, audio reading. And the thing is there's some chips out there or codecs that have an electret microphone handler. You know, I've, ha I've had some cellular uh, modules that have electret um, amplifiers built in. You just connect the, the microphone up directly and they do the biasing and everything for you. That's wonderful. The thing that really drives me a little bit the most crazy about the electrets is they're kind of big and you have to hand solder them. You can't put them through a... Um, wave soldering process you have to selective solder them or wave or hand solder them and that gets you know adds expense to your manufacturing complexity right because somebody has to sit there and solder them you can't just like just pump them out from a pick and place machine okay so then we have mems microphones right these are kind of more recent and mems microphones the way they work i saw this cool there's this paper and it was creative commons so i grabbed this image from it um the way it works is there's um the sound, what it does is, is it, see that like red thing? So that's like a spring. It's a mem spring that's metallic. And as the sound pushes that spring, like you see the airwaves come in and they push the spring, it creates a capacitor between it and the electrode, the yellow thing above it. And then you can measure that capacitance. And of course, as, as everyone remembers, the closer the capacitance plates are, um, the capacitance goes down, right? And also, like, the size of the plates matter. So you can, but you can, like, control a lot of that so you get much more um, uh, consistent readings. You're going to have more consistency over MEMS microphones because you can, you can control these processes a little better. Um, and so this, you know, gives you a very, like, tiny micro uh, capacitance change, and that can be converted to a voltage, and you can read this paper about how to do that. So this uh, transducer, that part gets um, shoved into um, the uh, this you know metal case. This is a cutaway design, and then on the right, there's a little ASIC, and the ASIC can do a little bit of computation. We'll talk about it in a second. And there's a sound port, um, but basically, the, the cool thing about this is you can you can pick and place it. They're extremely small. They're extremely thin. They're a little bit more expensive than electrets, but it, they're all in one, and so that benefit like outweighs the cheapness of electric because you don't have to have this um, hand soldering step. And so MEMS microphones have become very popular. Right? You can see kind of where they were like invented, made inexpensive. It's only been, you know, like 10-ish years uh, since they got really popular. 
Um, and they've just like totally take it off because again, small, repeatability, um, inexpensive, easy to integrate. And um, they have more options for output than the electrode. Again, the electrode only gives you this micro voltage. Uh, you have to amplify it. Whereas with the MEMS microphone, you have all these options. Here's like the CUI page. So for example, you see down the right, there's analog output. Um, so analog output is uh, kind of what you expect that capacitance is converted into an analog voltage. Uh, you still need to have an op amp there. You're, you don't need to have like the mega gain of an electret, but you do need to have some gain, you need some buffering. When is this great? You have an analog input to your uh, microcontroller or computer, and you can just quickly read analog voltages. Um, you're replacing an electret mic that created an analog voltage. You have something that, that it, it wants, expects analog, or you don't mind. Uh, you can save a little bit of money, and it, it's quite simple, right? The analog voltage is the analog voltage. Okay, so let's go back one. All right, and then above it, you see there's digital PDM microphones. Um, and these are pulse density modulation. And uh, pulse density modulation, let's go uh, two. So pulse density modulation is um, different than analog. It's a digital signal, but it kind of, it's, it's digital, but it's a little bit like PWM where it kind of like, it's, it's digital analog. If you like did a heavy, heavy low pass filter, um, then you would actually see the analog signal come out of a PDM. Um, you know, but what's nice is that you can, first off, read it with digital pins. You don't have to have an analog input. And second, you can clock it and you can have two microphones share uh, two, sorry, you can have the, them share the data and clock pin because what happens is one puts data on the lower, uh, the clock fall and one pushes data on the clock rise. And so you can actually get two microphones left and right um, on two digital pins. And if you have a PDM uh, peripheral on your um, microcontroller or FPGA or computer, here's what it looks like. Basically, the, the pulses just get um, more dense around uh, the midpoint of a sine wave, and then at the low and high end, they become... So it's like, it's basically PWM, but the uh, PWM rate dynamically changes to, to be um, as good as possible. And you can clock these at like, you know, megahertz or two megahertz. Okay, so that's PDM. And PDM is very common. You know, the NR52840 has PDM. There's like some PDM support on the STM32. But there's a lot of computers and chips that don't have PDM. Um, and you might want to have that quality of a digital conversion. You don't want to get an op amp involved. Um, but you do want to, you want to have a digital signal, but you don't have PDM input. And like, you kind of need to have a digital PDM peripheral to interface with PDM. Like you can fake it with SPI, um, but it doesn't work really well. Okay, so the third option you get with MEMS microphones, and like we're getting to the point here, is you can get I2S output microphones. And I2S is like a totally well-established standard with uh, the clock rate and how many bits per word and the word select for left and right and like left channel, right channel. And like pretty much any microcontroller that's like, you know, an ARM Cortex M0 or better is going to have I2S built in because it, you know, it's, it's the way to do digital audio and it's a totally great easy standard to um to use and especially with things like um single board linux computers they don't have pdm they don't have analog but they do have i2s mm, nice um so what you get here is you don't have to have that i2s codec that you would have had to include with like a pdm or um electret or analog microphone you get the i2s data raw right from the microphone which is like Kind of cool and kind of weird because it's like usually you don't expect something that small to have like a full I2S codec built in, but it does. So there's two options available. There's on the left there, the CMM3526, uh, and this is a bottom ported one. So you have to have a hole in your PCB. And this is the style we've seen before. Um, but the new NPI that we're talking about this week is the one on the right, the CMM4030. Why is it so cool? It's a top ported i2s microphone this is amazing phil have you ever seen this before no well i mean i did get the package that was delivered that's right we did get we got a package of these microphones but this yeah. is this is the first time i've seen a a fully digital i2s microphone with a top port which is pretty sweet so again the nice thing about these you can wire them directly up to a linux computer single board computer and get stereo audio input like hard coded on the i2s port you don't need to get a codec you don't need to do like I squared C configurations and like lookup tables, whatever. No, you just wire these up. You load up the I2S 
you know, device driver, and boom, you're set. Same with the mic controllers. Um, our Feather M4, our Feather M0, the, the STM32, they all have I2S input, and they're all going to have DMA that can work with it. So it's like, really easy to stream in audio um, over I2S, which is great. So uh, another thing I wanted to mention is not only can you order from DigiKey and get it the next day, but um, I'm noticing that you could also... From the product page on DigiKey, click to get the Snap EDA part, and I've used them, and they're, they actually work. It's footprints for the devices in like Altium and like Orcad and EagleCAD and KiCad and all you know, many CADs that I can't even remember. You can download them, so you don't even have to make the footprint. Or if you do like to make your footprints, you at least have something to start with. Um, so check that out, because I'm going to make a breakout for this uh, lovely microphone. So I thought, like, let's skip a step. Okay, it's available on DigiKey. Um, here is the uh, number. You can search for the name, or you can also use a short URL, digikey.com forward slash short forward slash Z. So I think it's, I'm going to guess, it's CUI, MEMS microphone, 4 millimeter by 3 millimeter. I don't know what the D is. I don't know what the 260 is, but the I2S means it's I2S output. Yeah. So that's and what that part number means. Digikey.com forward slash short forward slash ZDFJF1. That'll get it there. And that is uh, this oh, week's Ion MPI, but we're going to show you. Before, before we go, we, uh, just quickly, go. I'm going to show you the part because I do like to show off. So this is the uh, MEMS microphone. So you see it's got eight pads. It's got like power, ground, clock, word select, data, um, and then, of course, it's going to have at least one pin for, you know, you decide which um, left or right channel this is. And on the other, whoops, on the other side, you see the, uh, the top port. So a wonderful top port iTwist microphone. If you, if you want the smallest, easiest way to get audio in without any extra components, audio amplifiers, codecs, whatever, special electric handler chips, this gives you data immediately, instantly. Like one capacitor maybe is needed just to give you a nice bypass cap on the power supply. All right, and that's this week's INMPI. MPI.